But first to Art Basel, the huge annual art fair in Switzerland. This year the show turns 40 and despite the economic downturn, there's plenty of confidence in the air. One might have expected Art Basel to be a more modest affair this year. But prosperous collectors are out in force, despite the global economic crisis. There's no doom and gloom in the air. The show is as scintillating as ever. Complete with the glamour factor. Brad Pitt snapped up this work by German painter Neo Rauch for 680,000 euros. Art Basel's directors are feeling quite upbeat. We haven't really seen changes. We were very fortunate to have over 1,000 um, apl applications for this fair. And as always, we had a very strict selection of 300 participating galleries. So we're confident that the best of the best are here. It's due to the efforts of one man that the world's most prestigious art fair took hold in a medieval town with all of 180,000 inhabitants. And that man is art dealer Ernst Bayerler. His own impressive collection with works by Kandinsky, Matisse and Picasso is on show at the Fondation Bayerler. He was even able to coax Picasso into letting him into his studio. Bayerler no longer appears in public. He chose former Art Basel director Samuel Keller to head his foundation. Ernst Beiler was the reason all this happened here in Basel. Many cities considered starting art fairs back then, but you need an international network of supporters. A bit of luck and hard work were critical factors to keep something like this going for a long time. Photographer Kurt Wies has followed the art fair right from the beginning. 16,000 visitors attended the opening in 1970. Today, that number is up to 60,000. Wies has brought out a book to mark Art Basel's 40th anniversary. I expect the crisis will be reflected in the artworks. I've seen one by an Indian artist. A device that washes black suits. A whitewash job, so to say. It's impressive, and it seems to allude to the current crisis. Art dealer Hans Meyer from Dusseldorf reminisces as he leafs through Wies' volume called Looking Back at Art Basel. The first picture in Wies' book, and it's a really great book, was of my stand in 1970 with a sculpture by Jakob Agam, which I actually sold back then. Hans Meyer has been attending Art Basel since 1970. He was one of the first to display pop art, and he still showcases art from the 1960s. What I remember about the first Art Basel is how we arrived in town one day before the opening with a VW bus full of paintings and started to hang them ourselves. Everything was improvised. The organization wasn't exactly typically Swiss back then. It was totally makeshift. Munich artist Benedikt Hipp is at the fair for the first time. He's showing his paintings on wood in the Art Statements section, which gives talented newcomers a platform. He's hoping to sell and that the right people buy. It's best, of course, to be shown in a museum, in a public collection, because that's where the communication between viewer and artwork or artist happens. And that's when it gets interesting. Hip isn't concerned that the recession will rob him of his burgeoning career. He sees the situation as beneficial for newcomers. As young artists, who naturally are in a much lower price category, we have it much easier than someone who's in the five or six figure range. That's when it gets harder. Collectors are having to decide whether they'll lay out 60,000 euros or 6,000. Some buyers might be hesitant, but one thing Art Basel isn't exhibiting is signs of pessimism. 
excellent artworks and artists are ensuring brisk business at this fairest of fairs.